me the opportunity to uh, speak here about uh, this theme. So it's uh, again about uh, transport and uh, we want to see how which role work and I will specify uh, precisely what I mean by that uh, does uh, play uh, in, in, in on saga type uh, transport situations. Okay, these, these are uh, the, my collaborators, Chu Yun Yi, Jin John, and Young Woon Kim from Korea, and uh, from at that time in, in Augsburg, Michele Campisi and Peter Henge. I will mainly uh, report on uh, a paper which uh, we uh, wrote with these uh, three uh, people. Um, short overview, I will first. Uh, specify the Onsager relations, how I want to use them, uh, and uh, describe what, what the conditions are that these Onsager relations uh, uh, may hold, and uh, give a short argument under which conditions that that's the case, and give, a, so to say, a newer derivation, uh, which goes back to uh, fluctuation relations. Uh, in these fluctuation relations, actually, not only transport of energy in terms of, of heat and, of course, uh, transport of, of particles uh, shows up, but, sorry, but, but also uh, work plays a role. I will specify this uh, uh, precisely. And we will see that if this work would be zero, then the usual Onsager relations would hold. So usual Onsager relations means that first of all the directionality of the of the transport is according to Onsager and also that the symmetry relations, so the reciprocity relations uh, hold. But uh, if the work is finite, we find that uh, both uh, things, so the, the directionality as well as the uh, um, reciprocity uh, relations may fail, and at the end I will give uh, uh, some simple example and uh, some conclusions. So let's start with the Onsager relations. As you know them all, we have, so to say here, two big reservoirs T1 at the temperature T1 and with the chemical potential mu1. Here is a second reservoir with a different temperature, different chemical potential. We have some connection in between and uh, these uh, differences uh, in, in temperature and chemical potential will induce uh, currents of heat and currents of particles. So I, I uh, consider only a two-terminal case, one could generalize that, consider only one particle sort, also that can be generalized, that all that is, is not important here. So uh, in the regime where this temperature difference and the uh, difference in chemical uh, potentials is small, uh, we know that this uh, fluxes here can be expressed as linear combinations of these affinities, delta uh, the temperature difference and the uh, and, uh, uh, chemical potential difference, and that uh, these, uh, this matrix, this Onsager matrix, has two important properties. In this case, where I do not have any magnetic field, and where uh, both quantities Q and N uh, transform evenly under time reversal, uh, this uh, matrix is symmetric, so these two, this LQN and LNQ are the same, and moreover, uh, the matrix as such is, is positive or non-negative definite, which uh, then leads, so to say, to the usual uh, directionality uh, of the transport. Uh, so one, one condition under which one has this is, of course, that these affinities are small, but one has found that, uh, or argued under which conditions uh, such, such things uh, are valid, and one has found out that they are valid if th these quantities which are, are transported, so the heat and the, the particle number, obey a Gaussian Markov process, which also uh, observes detailed balance, which is, of course, uh, related to, to time reversal uh, uh, invariance. 
Uh, indeed, that this is not totally superfluous can be seen from some uh, counterexample. There, a non-Markovian process was considered, and one in this paper it was found, it's from quite old, from 87, that uh, Onzaga relations may be violated. So, uh, about 10, 15 years ago, Jaszynski and Buicic, uh investigated for a classical system the transport of, of heat based on, the, on, on a fluctuation relation. And uh, similar, uh, Andrié and, and Gaspar and Monay and uh, Tasaki uh, did this for, for quantum mechanical uh, systems. And uh, what they uh, assumed, uh, I will specify it uh, later uh, more, more precisely, uh, is that one starts with finite uh, bathes, which on the other hand have to be large. So they, they must be both finite but large. Uh, where this restriction comes from, we, we, will, see, uh, we will see later. And what I want, want to do here is to consider uh, baths which are finite in size and not necessarily large. So the kind of protocol which I want to uh, consider here is sketched here on the left-hand side. I start first uh, with the preparation of uh, the two systems. One should end up uh, at uh, some grand canonical state at the temperature Ta and, and some chemical potential nu A, and uh, accordingly uh, the, the B uh, system at other temperatures, at another temperature Tb and other uh, chemical potential uh, nu B. This preparation should be finished at uh, the time zero, and at this time zero, I do several measurements on these still isolated systems. I measure the energy of this system, the energy of that system, the number which of particles which are contained in this system, and the number of particles which are contained in that system. Uh, these measurements can be uh, done uh, at the same time because the according observables, uh, the Hamiltonians, one with the other, and uh, the, the, the particle numbers commute, and so I can, I can do uh, all these measurements, uh, so to say, instantaneously. Once I have done this, so I, I write up what I have found out, I bring into contact uh, the, two, uh, the two systems. Uh, in the general case, uh, the, the, this, this interaction could have some time dependence. But what I, I will consider here is the most simple time dependence, where it is exactly zero uh, up to time t. That, of course, I, I, is, is already uh, implied by this sketch here. Uh, is constant from, 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 from t equals zero on, and is suddenly uh, turned off uh, again at some time tau. Yeah, and at, at this time tau, so to say, the, the protocol uh, is, this protocol is finished, and I make, again, same kind of measurements as I did before. That means I get here, then, the energy uh, of the, of the uh, system, of the left system, or system A, energies of the right uh, system, uh, particle numbers uh, uh, of both systems. Good. Uh, here is uh, still specified the initial condition. As I said, I, I, I want to prepare this in a, a grand canonical state. So since the uh, two uh, parts are separated, the, there is no, no correlation, no entanglement between these states, and so that's a factorizing initial state. And with this factorizing initial state, one can show that the probability that one finds a change of the energy in system A and a change of the energy in system B and a change in, in, in the particle number. I forgot to mention, I assume that both uh, the Hamiltonians, the, so to say the, the, the Hamiltonians of the systems A and B, as well as the, uh, uh, the interaction uh, both commute with the total number Na plus Nb. 
number operator. That means the total number uh, of, of particles in the system is supposed to be conserved. Yeah? So I, I don't talk about uh, phonons, but particles like, like electrons or such. So some other particles would do so in general. Uh, so, therefore, th sorry, therefore I have, so to say, individual uh, energy uh, changes for, for, uh, for, for system A and system B, but the same uh, apart from the size uh, uh, change uh, for, for system A and system B. Uh, this, this probability can be uh, in principle calculated. I mean, I know there is this uh, condition that delta n should be the, the difference of, of nf and n a and uh, at, at the end and uh, in the beginning. And similarly for the, uh, for the change of the energies, which can be expressed here, i and f uh, are just uh, indices which uh, collect all quantum numbers in the initial state and in the final state. Uh, so this is the uh, probability of finding, joint probability of finding uh, a set of quantum numbers i initially and set of quantum numbers f uh, uh, at the end. Uh, this probability is given according to the ordinary rules of quantum mechanics. It's just uh, the, uh, the, 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 the probability uh, of finding uh, the system in state i times the transition probability from going, uh, for going from i to f, where the unitary uh, operator u is just given by the full Hamiltonian, including uh, the interaction. Huh? Uh, Important for the following is that, of course, this transition probability is symmetric. That's a consequence of the unitarity and also of the fact that uh, this uh, uh, protocol is, is completely time reversal. Therefore, uh, th this, is, this is symmetric. And moreover, uh, the initial conditions, uh, pi, which uh, are given by these, these Boltzmann factors here are related to the final conditions in terms of this matrix M, which can be written in this way. And these two blue equations have as a consequence a fluctuation theorem, which is given here, which tells me that the probability of finding uh, delta E A, delta E B, and delta N relative to the respective negative values of these quantities here is given by this exponential factor here, which contains uh, beta, uh, beta alpha is the inverse temperature of, of system alpha, and so on. So now one can <coughs> go and interpret these energy changes uh, as here, the, so to say, the change of the energy of the total system, one interprets as the work which is imposed into the system by contacting and separating uh, the, uh, these two systems. Uh, whereas uh, the, the difference of the energies basically uh, gives a Q. If one wants to, one can also take into account the delta N here. That can also be done in, in different ways. But we, we have chosen, uh, chosen this way. This is a, a kind of, of definition of Q. And if I rewrite uh, the fluctuation theorem, this here, which, which is under the given assumptions completely exact, into this form I get this exact uh, fluctuation theorem in which uh, appears here in the exponent uh, the combination of the total heat which is exchanged in this process uh, times the uh, corresponding uh, affinity delta beta and here uh, the change of the particle numbers times the corresponding affinity minus uh, average uh, temperature uh, and, and difference uh, of the chemical potential. And of course, these, these two uh, probabilities, P delta E and P W Q, are uh, related in this uh, 
trivial way with each other. Now, let's first consider the case where w is zero. That can have that can be the case for, 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 for different reasons. <coughs> One could, could imagine uh, interactions which do not change the total work. So that, that are a special case of, of, of uh, interactions, then the, uh, W would be exactly zero. And later on we will see that also for, for practical reasons other uh, arguments uh, uh, may lead to uh, at least approximate or very small uh, work values. So if, if, w, if, if w equals zero is the only uh, result that can come up, then I can uh, simplify my uh, probability uh, density <coughs> for these three variables and describe it by this, this uh, probability density. And for that, I also <coughs> have a fluctuation theorem. Uh, <coughs> if I... Uh, just integrate, uh, yeah, if I just integrate this over all possible values of Q and delta N, then uh, I, s is this true what I'm saying? No, I, yes. <coughs> then I get, uh, I get a relation like that. That's a kind of, of uh, uh, Yazinski relation. And from that with uh, Jensen's inequality, I find this relation, which tells me that under this condition, the <coughs> directionality of uh, a Q and delta N is always uh, as one uh, expected, expects it. So that, that's, and, and that is, that is, uh, was already uh, shown in this paper by um, uh, Gaspar and, and uh, Andrieu. Now, what I said before, that was not, uh, that, that for that it was not necessary that <coughs> the affinities are small. Now we want to assume that we are close to, to equilibrium. <coughs> that means that the affinities uh, are small and that means that we can expand this exponential here and leave and, and just uh, uh, omit uh, higher order terms. Uh, and then one may multiply this equation by Q and uh, delta N integrate and gets then these relations. So Q and delta N are now the Q uh, is, is, is the <coughs> mean value of the uh, heat, total heat, which is exchanged <coughs> in this process, which uh, takes the time tall. So one, one can assume that, and in the example which I will show later, it will also <coughs> turn out that this is the case, that after a relatively short time, uh, the <coughs> amount of, of Q is proportional to tau. Yeah, that means we can, we can introduce a, a heat flux and accordingly a particle flux by <coughs> simply dividing this Q and delta N by tau. And then uh, if we do that, we get something which actually looks exactly like uh, the Onsager relations. And as one can see here, these Onsager coefficients, for those we have now explicit, uh, expressions in terms of expectation values with respect <coughs> to the initial probability density times the, uh, times the transition probability, uh, 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 which, uh, which tell you that uh, this is uh, just uh, the matrix of second moments of Q and delta N, meaning that it has to be symmetric and that it will be positive. So that is, that follows, <coughs> this follows uh, immediately in this case. Now, if the work W is not zero, uh, one gets two modifications. 
And one can do a, a similar analysis as before. One expands with respect to delta beta and, and delta mu. But additionally to these linear terms, one finds terms which are independent of delta beta and delta mu. That is, there is some instantaneous or some, some, some spontaneous transport, uh, or at least the possibility of a spontaneous uh, transport, which happens even in the, in the equilibrium case. Now, these symbols here, they are a little bit uh, complicated. Uh, this is basically uh, uh, an expression uh, for the, for the uh, energies. The J is, is either I or, or F for the energies, for the initial energies or, or final energies, and the, the, the difference is uh, between uh, A and, and B. And uh, these deltas here means that the mean values are subtracted. So these are the fluctuations of the, uh, of the exchanged uh, energies and similarly uh, for, the, for the delta n's. And uh, so one deviation from standard on saga is the appearance of this uh, spontaneous transport. The other deviation is that uh, this matrix here, which, which then connects the linear part with the fluxes, is not manifestly symmetric. Yeah? It is just given by this correlation function, which is no longer an autocorrelation function of, say, uh, this x, uh, x beta and x mu. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Uh, of course, I mean the, the cause for these for these terms here is the contacting and the separating of the two systems, which uh, imposes work on the on the system, and which uh, therefore also breaks uh, the time uh, uh, translational symmetry. Because if if this average would be time translational symmetric, then of course uh, it would would be uh, this contribution uh, would vanish. Uh, there is a way to introduce still a symmetric transport matrix uh, if one does not consider the average value of Q itself, but if one modifies this by this uh, factor E to minus uh, average uh, inverse temperature, uh, times the work minus one. You see, if the work is uh, zero, ah, uh, there, there is something screwed up. That must be a plus, I'm sorry. Because if the work is zero, that must not be zero, but uh, it, it should become two, right? That's this two, two here then. So that must be a plus sign, sorry. Uh, so in, in this limit, uh, one, one gets back uh, the previous result, but otherwise we, we get this. And, but, and this, this matrix here is now an uh, uh, autocorrelation matrix of the previously introduced uh, uh, fluctuating uh, heat and, and, uh, and uh, uh, particle number. Uh, quantities, which therefore is uh, uh, positive and symmetric. Uh, the deviation between the two can be uh, written in this form, and then again one can see it's it's a matter of uh, of of broken time reversal symmetry that that uh, this this quantity is non-zero if uh, uh, W uh, is. Uh, not, not just zero. So let me come to a simple example that's kind of tight binding uh, model. So that is uh, for, for system A, a linear lattice of uh, M A power, M A minus one particles and M uh, B uh, minus one particles, uh, which uh, are uh, separated up to time uh, t, uh, t equals zero. Uh, again, brought into uh, a thermal equilibrium at different temperatures and uh, chemical potentials. Then 
uh, during this uh, interaction time tau brought into contact and uh, then separated again. The Hamiltonian is just a, such a relatively simple uh, Hamiltonian where you, you allow for, for jumps with the same jump rate. Uh, and um, these, these C's are fermion uh, creation and annihilation operators. And we uh, considered here an interaction in principle of the same type, same, same hopping uh, uh, term between this, par this particle and that particle, uh, which, however, uh, in general has a different uh, a coupling constant. Uh, we choose a coupling constant which was about one-tenth of the, of the coupling constant here, so a relatively uh, weak, weak coupling. And uh, yes. Then uh, one finds the following uh, behavior uh, in the case uh, that uh, that the temperatures are the same and the chemical potential are the same. Uh, if then uh, the two chains have equal number of sites, then of course everything is totally symmetric and there cannot be any transport and that corresponds to this red curve which goes from here to here which is exactly zero. Yeah? So then, then there is no transport. But at the moment if the, 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 the two chains uh, have different number of sites, either differing by two or six or up to you know, 30, uh, you you find this kind of behavior, step almost step-like behavior. It is in all cases in the beginning zero up to a time tau b, and this time tau b uh, is basically uh, the the round trip time for a signal uh, in in the smaller chain. Uh, the b chain here is always the smaller chain, so that that determines when, so to say for the first time, the smaller system realizes that it is finite. Yeah? As long as it thinks it is infinite, uh, there, is, there is no, no transport, but then uh, it, it makes uh, here a, a, a jump-like behavior and uh, uh, then uh, it gives, so to say, as a relay, as a, as a late uh, uh, response to the coupling, uh, this, this contribution uh, to, to, to transported heat. And uh, similarly also um, uh, the particle number behaves like that. So it's also first the particle, no particle is, is transported in this, in this first time. And then in later times it makes this, this jump-like behavior. Okay, for the uh, case here, as I said, the, the, the coupling uh, between the two uh, parts A and B is a tenth of the jumping rate uh, within a chain, so relatively small. Also, uh, these uh, average uh, uh, transported numbers of particles are relatively small, uh, as, as are uh, the, 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 the temperatures. Um, so now you see that uh, this time tau b is proportional to the size of the smaller particle. So that means the longer, the larger the, this size is, the larger this time will also be. That means this time where, so to say, where, where the, at least this, this spontaneous transport does not occur, uh, becomes longer and longer the larger the system is. And that is the reason why uh, you you uh, have to make the assumption that you have a large system if you want to describe the uh, uh, the, the transport uh, in in this in this Onsaga way. At least I mean we will see that also the other the other contributions uh, depend uh, crucially uh, on 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 this on this time. Uh, this is uh, the amount of on the left hand side the amount of heat and that's the amount of, of uh, transported particles uh, at uh, a time 1.5 as a function of delta beta. 
and you see uh, at small at large values of delta beta so to say the directionality of the the usual uh, normal directionality sets in but uh, for small uh, uh, temperature differences this uh, instantaneous uh, uh, contribution uh, still dominates and gives you a transport, so to say, in the wrong, wrong direction or unexpected direction, or it should be, maybe say better. Uh, this uh, is, yeah, you, you, the, the matrix D, which you hardly can see here, and here you see it a little bit better. That is the difference between uh, the transport matrix which connects uh, the, um, the affinities with uh, the, 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 the uh, heat and the, particle, the transported particle number, whereas uh, the matrix L, so that's the difference, be, uh, sorry, the difference between this matrix and the symmetrized matrix, this, this symmetric matrix L. Yeah? Uh, so this difference stays constant all the time. Yeah? And uh, it makes, so to say, a relatively sudden jump initially and then uh, uh, stays constant. And, sorry, and and so basically if you are able to neglect this contribution, then this would give you uh, the behavior uh, which, which, uh, which describes a symmetric, uh, trans symmetric uh, transport matrix. Uh, so actually, it's again a matter of how large this time is, how important uh, uh, this, these deviations are. I think uh, I have to, to stop here. Maybe I go, yeah. Here are the conclusions, and so I, I want to stop. Thank you.